Today we're on page 1 of our chapter 11 notes packet. Now chapter 11 is graphing trig functions. So we'll be graphing um, sine and cosine curves as well as some tangent and uh, inverse trig functions. Alright, but starting off with the basic graphs of sine and cosine. The sine and cosine functions can be easily graphed by considering their values as at the quadrantal angles those that are the integer multiples of 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. Due to considerations from physics and calculus, most trig graphing is done with the input angle in units of radians, not degrees. So we're going to consider the functions f of x equals sine x and g of x equals cosine x, where x is an angle in radians. By using the unit circle, we're going to fill out the table below for the selected quadrantal angles. All right, so let's just draw a quick sketch of our unit circle. Putting down the four points, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. All right, now we know their degree measures, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. Now for their radian measure, 0 radians or 2 pi radians. 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2 radians, 180 pi radians, and 270 is 3 pi over 2 radians. Okay, so now I'm going to use blue pen and we're going to fill in the chart for cosine. All right, I'm going to start in the middle at 0. Cosine of 0 radians, 0 radians, from looking at the uh, unit circle, cosine is the x-coordinate, so the cosine of 0 radians is 1. The cosine of pi over 2 radians, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Cosine of pi radians is negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 radians is 0. And the cosine of 2 pi radians is 1. Now for my negatives, okay, so here I would just be going, looking clockwise around the circle, right? So the um, cosine of negative pi over 2 would be equivalent to here, which is 0. Then the cosine of negative pi would be negative 1. The cosine of negative 3 pi over 2 would be 0. And the cosine of negative 2 pi, 1. I'm going to take my red pen and complete the table for sine, right? Starting at zero radians and then going to the right, filling in the chart. So zero radians, the sine of zero um, is going to be the y-coordinate, which is zero. The sine of pi over two radians, the y-coordinate here is one. The sine of pi radians, zero the sine of 3 pi over 2 radians, negative 1, and the sine of 2 pi, 0. Okay, now filling in to the left. Um, the sine of negative pi over 2 would be here, negative 1. The sine of negative pi, 0. The sine of negative 3 pi over 2, 1. And the sine of negative 2 pi, 0. Now we're going to graph these. We're going to plot these points on the grid that's provided here. Graph both sine and cosine curves on the grid shown below. Clearly label which curve is which. Okay, so from the table here, I'm graphing cosine first. Now you notice that our x-axis, um, the scale is in radians. And our first box represents or our first scale is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. All right. So in our y scale, that is simply our numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. So our, but our x is broken up in intervals of pi over 2 or 90 degrees, right? This would be 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. Okay, but we're plotting the radian measure here, um, 0 from the chart, cosine of 0, 
is 1. So plot the point 0, 1. And then cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So we're plotting the point pi over 2, 0. And then pi, negative 1. Not sorry, I didn't see that. This was 0, 1, pi over 2, 0, pi, negative 1. Next, 3 pi over 2, 0 and an x value of 2 pi, y value of 1. Okay, so I have this. I'm going to connect this with a nice smooth curve. And now, from the table, negative pi over 2, y value 0. So negative pi over 2, 0. Continuing negative pi, negative 1. Negative 3 pi over 2, 0 negative 2 pi 1. Okay, so here's our cosine curve. So this is y equals cosine x. And you can see that y equals cosine x, that the cosine curve is symmetric with the y-axis. Next, take the red, and let's graph um, sine, y equals sine x, right? Zero radians, zero y value. So zero, zero, it's our starting point for sine. Pi over two radians, y value of one. Pi over two, one. All right, continuing, pi, zero. Three pi over two, negative one. 2 pi, 0. If I connect these five, nice curve. There we go. And negative pi over 2, negative 1. Negative pi, 0. Negative 3 pi over 2, 1. And negative 2 pi, 0. And here we have y equals sine x. Okay, y equals sine x, it's not symmetric with the y-axis, it's symmetric with the origin. Which is the same as 180 rotational symmetry. Okay, so here we have our cosine curve and our sine curve. Now, the domain and range of the sine and cosine functions are the same. State them below in interval notation. Okay, so I'm just going to use blue. Um, cosine, right, goes from negative 2 pi to 2 pi in this particular limited graph, and so does sine. So the domain would be negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. Okay, but in general, Oops. In general, right, um, they would actually continue, right? These curves continue. So in general, the domain for a sine or cosine curve is going to be all real numbers. Now the range, right, how high and how low, the lowest point and the highest point. Again, for what is graphed here, we do have a low point. What's the lowest point for each one? it's a negative 1, highest point 1. So the range would be from negative 1, sorry, to 1. Right. Now what's going to happen in general, um, it'll end up being, this can change, alright, and I think I'm not going to mention that yet. After how much horizontal distance will both sine and cosine repeat its basic pattern, right? You have this basic pattern of, okay, cosine here starts at 1, comes down, down to negative 1, and now is back up to positive 1, right? So it takes a length of 2 pi. The same for sine. Sine started at 0, 0, got up to 1, back down to, onto the x-axis, down to negative 1, and then back to 
zero. So this is one complete curve of a sine function. Okay, so for cosine, cosine looks like this, right? If I just draw the um, like quadrant one here, the positive portion of the x, um, it started at zero one. Um, in the middle is down at negative one, and then back up to one. So cosine is like this. It's kind of the cup shape. Cosine starts at 0a, okay. and the length of this was 2 pi. Now sine, and if I just focus on positive portion of the x, started at 0, 0, midway was back on the x-axis, and then ended up back on the x. So it started off at 0, 0, went up to 1, came back down, hit the x, down to negative 1, and then back up. So this is one cycle of the sine curve. And sine starts at um, 0, 0. Now this a here, this is going to be the leadoff coefficient the lead coefficient, right? So sine is kind of more of like an S shape, but always starts at zero, zero, as long as no shifts have been applied. And cosine um, starts at zero, one, all right? And it's more of this kind of C or T cup shape. Now, Oh, before I leave that, sorry. In general, going back to range, the range is going to be um, negative absolute value of A, that leadoff coefficient, and comma, absolute value of A. Okay, now on to page two. Now we would like to explore the effect of changing the coefficient of the trig function. In essence, we would like to look at the graphs of the functions of the forms y equals a sine x and y equals a cosine x. All right, so for the first um, graph, we have the graph of y equals cosine x. And using the graphing calculator, we're going to sketch and label each of the following equations. Now, be sure your calculator is in radiant mode. Well, all right, I'd rather use the calculator to check, okay? Um, we're, we're, we want to graph y equals 3 cosine x. We have here y equals cosine x has been graphed for us. y equals 3 cosine x. I'm going to use blue. Right. Back from chapter 4 when we worked with transformations, um, if this a value or 3 was in front of our um, function, it meant like a dilation of 3. And what did we do? We multiplied just the y-coordinate values by 3, all right? So it's the same thing here. If I start with the cosine curve, if I start with this point 0, 1, the y-coordinate is 1, right? And I simply multiply that by 3, it's going to go to be 0, 3. So it had moved to here. This y-coordinate is 0, so that stays where it is. This y-coordinate is negative 1, so I multiply by 3, and that'll bring us down to negative 3. This y-coordinate is 0, so it remains. This y-coordinate is 1 multiplied by 3, it will bring us up to 3. Okay, now the same on the other side here. That stays 0. This negative 1 goes down to negative 3. This remains at 0. This y-coordinate of positive 1 will multiply by 3, bring us up to positive 3. Now let's connect these. And I'll show you on the calculator in just a minute. Okay, that's a better picture. So 
So what happened here, instead of starting at 0, 1, because the lead coefficient was 3, we start at 0, 3. Okay, and then instead of ending here at 2 pi radians at 0, 1, it ended at 0, 3. Oh, sorry, 2 pi, 3. Now, using the calculator, you can do this. All right, if I go to y equals, you do have to be in radian mode. Okay, so let me check my mode first. All right, my mode is in radians. I go to y equals, and I key in the function 3 cosine x. Okay, now um, if you press the zoom key, and then 7 for trig, okay? That will take your x coordinate, um, your x window from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. So there we have it. There it's being graphed. So this is y equals 3 cosine x. Let me label that y equals 3 cosine x. Now I'll use another color. Um, next I'll use red for y equals negative 4 cosine x. All right. If I calculator first, and I go to key in negative 4 cosine x. Okay, what's happened here? Our original cosine would have started at 0, 1. Instead, take that y coordinate, multiply by negative 4, and starts down here at 0, negative 4. Our original, now again, the blue is y equals 3 cosine x. I don't have regular cosine there. All right, look at the worksheet for your y equals cosine x. Okay, so let's plot these points. So instead of being at 0, 1 here, we start at 0, negative 4. One, two, three. And this one, instead of being 0, negative 1, take the negative 1, multiply by negative 4. And instead of ending at uh, 2 pi 1, we're at 2 pi negative 4. So here's half of it. And then the other half, 0, this is going to be at negative 4, um, negative 4, okay. Now y equals 3 cosine x, I'm going to use green, y equals 3 cosine x. I'm sorry, that's 3 halves cosine x, so I think I'll put it as um, 1.5 cosine x. Here it comes in green. So if I look at 0 radians, where do I start? I'm at 1.5. And, and then at 2 pi radians, I'm at 1.5. And, and then at negative 2 pi radians, 1.5. So I'm starting at between 1 and 2, 1 and a half. I'm ending at 2 pi radians, 1 and a half. And at pi radians, I'm down at negative 1 and a half. And then at negative 2 pi, 1 and a half. And at negative pi, negative 1 and a half. This is in green. So this is y equals 3 halves cosine x. And let me finish the other, connecting my other points here. All right, now using purple, y equals negative 2 cosine x. y equals negative 2 cosine x. OK. Instead of starting at 0, 1, I'm going to start at 0, negative 2, right? 
and then at 2 pi we would be at 2 pi negative 2 and midway between at pi radians will be up at positive 2. Now this is symmetric with the y-axis so at negative 2 pi negative 2 and at negative pi positive 2. Let's connect these This is y equals negative 2 cosine x. All right, so there we have, and I've just checked that with the calculator. So I'm looking at the purple here. Nope. All right, we start off at 0 radians at negative 2 at 2 pi radians, negative 2. As we can see, this coefficient, all right, the coefficient here controls, sorry, the, co the coefficient controls the height that the cosine curve rises and falls above the x-axis. Its absolute value is the given name for amplitude. Okay, so amplitude is equal to the absolute value of A. Now we want to um, take our basic sine function, and without the use of your calculator, sketch each of the following sine curves on the axis below. All right, so here we have our sine function starts at 0, 0, at 2 pi is back at 0, Midway between at pi is back at a y value of 0. All right. So if we have y equals sine 2x is the first one we're going to graph. Sine curve is always going to start at 0, 0. But instead of going up to 1, this will go as high as 2. So at pi over 2 radians, we'll have a y value of 2. At pi radians, we'll be back on the x-axis. At 3 pi over 2 radians, instead of being at negative 1, we'll be at negative 2. And at 2 pi, we'll be on the x-axis. So here we have half of our y equals 2 sine x from 0 to 2 pi. And now I'll get the other part of the per curve. Um, by finishing up our other five points. Now, red, y equals 4 sine x. y equals 4 sine x. Again, at pi over 2, instead of having a y value of 1, it would have a y value of 4. And at 3 pi over 2, instead of having a y value of negative 1, it would have a y value of negative 4. And from 0 to negative 2 pi, at negative pi over 2, instead of being at negative 1, it would be at negative 4. And at negative 3 pi over 2, it would be up at positive 4. For y equals negative 3 sine x, green. Negative 3. So at pi over 2, instead of being at 1, y value 1, it would have a y value of negative 3. And at 3 pi over 2 radians, instead of being at negative 1, it would have a y value of negative 1 times negative 3, which is positive 3. And this is continuous, so at negative pi over 2, positive 3. At negative 3 pi over 2, negative 3. Remember, this is symmetric with the origin. And in purple, 
y equals negative one half sine x. Right? At pi over two, instead of being at one, it'll be at negative a half. And at three pi over two, y value of positive a half. At negative pi over two, negative a half times negative one would be positive a half. And at negative three pi over two, one times negative a half would be negative a half. All right, so there we have our four sine curves. And if we want to do a quick check on the graphing calculator, I want two sine x, then four sine x, negative three sine x, and negative one half sine x, and the negative point five. Again, the only thing I don't have is the original y equals sine x. So this is y equals 2 sine x, right? See it starting off at 0, 0, and going up to 2. This is y equals 4 sine x, coming up in red. y equals negative 3 sine x. It's going to start off, when it gets to the origin, it's going to go down to negative 3. And then y equals negative one half sine x. Okay, thank you for your attention for this video.